On today's show, all the sales analysts got it wrong. The U.S. market is red hot. Garmin comes out with forward collision warning to retrofit any car. And BYD lands a big order for electric cars from one of the most unexpected countries in the world. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for September 2nd of 2015. Chinese automaker BYD is becoming more of a global player in the automotive industry. Bloomberg reports that it just completed its largest overseas agreement to send 10,000 vehicles to Sudan, even though the country is racked by war. BYD will ship knockdown parts of gasoline-powered and electric vehicles to the country and assemble them there. And you know, as we gear up for the introduction of Tesla's Model X, more information is starting to trickle out about the CUV. According to reports, the first examples rolling off the line will be high-end Signature Series models, which will carry a pretty hefty price tag of $132,000. It only comes in one battery size, a 90 kilowatt hour unit that's estimated to get 240 miles of range. And like the Model S, the X is fast. Zero to 60 comes in 3.8 seconds. Tack on another 10 grand for ludicrous speed, and 60 can be hit in just 3.2 seconds. Tesla is expected to deliver the first examples later this month. Speaking of Tesla, the EV maker announced earlier this year that it would have a fairly exciting upgrade for its first car, the Roadster. Customers can now swap out their old battery pack for a new one. It's about 70 kilowatt hours in size and is heavier than the old unit, but it will increase range by more than 35% to about 330 miles. The new pack can be reserved now for $5,000, but it will ultimately set back customers just under $30,000. Tesla says that number is due to low volume and is about equal to its own costs, so it's really not making any money on them. Still to come, how Garmin can retrofit any car with new safety technology. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, Leading the automotive world in intelligent, connected vehicles, we run on brain power. Garmin, the maker of portable navigation units and other systems for your car, just introduced its new dash cam units. The devices mount to your windshield, and as long as it's plugged into a power outlet in the car, the unit will begin recording high-def footage when the car is started and stop when the car is turned off. And if you're in an accident, it will automatically save footage on impact. And for the first time, Garmin's dash cam is available with driver alerts, including forward collision, red light, and speed camera warnings. The new dash cam units range in price from $170 to $200 and will be available later this year. Volkswagen CEO Martin Winterkorn seemed to have the management board on his side after he clashed with former chairman Ferdinand Pieck. Pieck was pushed out, and Wintercorn stayed on. Now reports are coming out that the German automaker wants to extend the CEO's contract until the end of 2018. In an industry where most executives are hanging up their boots at age 65, this contract would have Wintercorn running things into his early 70s. I guess they must really like what he's doing. Coming up next, John takes a look at how all the sales analysts in the auto industry got it wrong. Sales are doing much better than anyone expected. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. Well, we got the latest sales results for the American market yesterday, and it turns out the analysts got it all wrong. They were looking at the big correction in the stock market and the fact that there was one less selling day this August versus a year ago. And the analysts were sure that sales would be down or flat at the best. But instead, the public surprised everyone because sales are sizzling hot. The SAR came in at an unbelievable 17.7 million vehicles versus 17.2 million a year ago. Total sales came in at 1.56 million vehicles, and that was up 3.3% 
on a daily selling rate as reported by Wards. The companies with the strongest sales include Tesla, up a whopping 330%. Mitsubishi jumped nearly 27%. Volvo was up nearly 23%. And Jaguar Land Rover posted a strong gain of over 16%. Though that was all through Land Rover, and I'll have more on that in just a minute. Amongst the full-line manufacturers, Ford outperformed the rest. It was up close to 10%. FCA extended its selling streak, jumping 5%. You know, that's now 65 months in a row that FCA has boosted sales. GM was up 3.1%. Nissan was up 3%. But the two big Japanese automakers did not keep pace with the rest of the market. Honda was down more than 3% and Toyota down more than 5%. Part of this problem for them is comparing them to a year ago when they had a particularly strong month. But the real story in all these numbers is in the mix of what got sold. Light trucks, including pickups, SUVs, and crossovers, shot up more than 12%. But passenger car sales fell nearly 7%. And that's why Land Rover is hauling the freight for JLR. And when you dig deeper into that light truck segment, it's the crossovers that are the hottest models in the market. In fact, the small crossover segment, including the Chevrolet Trax, the Honda HRV, and the Jeep Renegade, is up a staggering 70% versus a year ago. I don't think we've ever seen such a strong shift in the marketplace as we're seeing right now with the growth in the crossover segment. We'll have more to report on sales in the days to come, but that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please tune in again tomorrow.